This video is brought to you by Train Signal, your home for IT training products. Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching the Getting Started with Google Apps mini series. In this video, I'm going to take you through a short walkthrough of the management page just so you can see what's available. Let's go ahead and get started. Here on the management page, pretty much everything that we need to do is simplified and categorized into very easy links. So uh, let's start with the uh, start page. And here in the start page, we'll need to log in. Looks like I got timed out here. So let me get logged back in real quick. All right, we have the option to customize the start page and also alter which URL the start page actually is accessed at. Now, I'm going to show you this in a future video, so we're going to skip this for the time being. We can also disable the start page and remove that particular service if it's something we don't want our users to actually get into. Uh, the customizing of the start page item is pretty simple. We go here, we can change the style, the layout, the colors, the header and the footer, the content, and actually what's going to be on the start page. All of this stuff is very easy to use. It's all very Ajaxy and drag and drop kind of stuff. Uh, and then at the end, we can actually click on the publish whenever we make alterations. Let's go back to the control panel now. And go back to the dashboard alright now the chat doesn't have a lot of alterations we use that by simply downloading the Google Talk client uh, the web pages we can build from here we can jump to and alter our email settings let's take a quick look at that we can change the URL again I'll show you how to do that in a future video if any received email does not match any existing address what we might want to do is forward the email to a catch-all address and actually have there be a separate email address that we'd have to create in the user section which we'll go through that in just a moment so that we can get any and all random email that may happen to come our way uh, now we've already activated our email but in case you do need to go back and reactivate it for some weird reason maybe you changed your domain providers or DNS records we can go back and get the instructions again and we can even disable email altogether if that's a service that you don't want to use which does that make any sense? Uh, well, <laughs> I think not. Um, because Google Mail and Gmail is one of the prime services offered here. Uh, th same thing with the calendar. We can alter calendars and documents and spreadsheet settings here as well. And let's just take a quick look at here. We can s specify what uh, elements we can share what kind of elements within this domain we want to set as the defaults and we can also disable the calendar. Let's take one quick look at the docu documents and spreadsheets item. And once again, do you want to and what, at what level do you want to allow sharing of your documents only out in, within this domain or do you want to limit what's shared outside of it? Let's go ahead and cancel that. Let's take a look at the user account section. When we want to create new users, this is the quickest and easiest place to go to for it. We can create a new user simply by clicking on it and then filling out the little form that provides our the first name, last name, and the actual username that you want to provide. Now, it initially creates for you a temporary password, but you can also set your own password. Let's cancel that. We can also upload many users at once, and I'll show you that in a separate video. Uh, also, any email addresses that we currently have, uh, we can see those here real quick. All right, let's move on. Let's go into the domain settings. and We've actually seen this before in, in a previous video when we actually managed to upload a logo. But if we want to allow uh, users to, uh, con if we want to provide phone numbers or contact information for the help support, um, we can do that. Uh, also, do you want to use the current version of the control panel, or do you also want you, do you want to use next generation? Uh, next generation, I think, is probably going to keep you a little more on the bleeding edge and a little more convenient. Account information: When we want to upgrade to Premier, as we grow, we can do that from here. We can also get rid of our Google Apps account altogether for this particular domain. If you decide to take everything in-house, you can actually get rid of this after you have migrated all of your email over to your new email server. 
Email notifications can also be altered here and things for contact information, the primary and secondary email addresses that are outside of our own domain just in case something wrong happens with the Google Apps account. The domain names, we can add another domain alias. If we own a separate domain alias and we want to forward email from that separate domain to our own primary domain, we can do that here as well. So real quickly in the advanced tools section, uh, we were talking earlier about our user accounts bulk update and that's a really neat item where we can actually update and create many users all at once. And last but not least over here underneath service settings we is just a quick shortcut to jumping to any of the different services that Google Apps offers. And that's uh, all there is to it. This management and the control panel is very easy to use. Gives you a lot of neat stats, even things like you know your active users over the last 90 days, how often they've been on. And that concludes our short little tour. This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, network admin's number one choice for professional IT training, where you'll find videos on Microsoft, Cisco, Linux, CompTIA, and more. Come visit us today at www dot trainsignal dot com